I bin Abi Jumher El Asse. Mohammed bin Ali bin Ibrahim, El Shabani El Bakri El Asi Arabic. M H M D B N Li Bin Biram El Shawidni El Bikri El Sai, commonly known as I bin Abi Jumher El Asi Arabic. B B N by J M H W R El Sai, born in 1435, died in 1505, was an influential Shia Muslim. He was born in the village of Taymiyya in eastern Arabia, specifically what is now Al Asa Governorate during the reign of the first Jabrid Emir, and was raised in prosperity by his father Zayn al Din Ali and grandfather Ibrahim, both Shiite scholars. Ibn Abi Jumhur studied first with them before traveling on to Najaf in what is now Iraq to study with Sharif al Din Hassan bin Abdul Karim Fatal, who gave him permission to transmit hadith. In 1472, the young postulant went on Hajj and met Ali bin Hillel el Jazari in Jabal Amil, giving the latter the same permission. Returning for a while to eastern Arabia, Ibn Abi Jumper left for Iraq once more before moving on to Mashhad in Greater Khorasan, where he continued to write and teach. He gained renown for his debates with Ahmad bin Yahya al Taftazani, a sunny jurist of the Shafi'i school. Ibn Abi Jumhur traveled extensively throughout the rest of his life between Persia and Iraq, both governed then by the Timurid Empire as well as his native land, mostly staying in Mashhad, Najaf, and al Asr, respectively. All the while he extensively taught and wrote treatises and critiques on fiqh jurisprudence, rhetoric, philosophy, ethics, theology, and hadith. He is best known for his theory of Shiite hadith, essentially summed up as endorsing adding, whenever possible, over subtraction in interpretation. It is not clear when or where he died. Ancestors His full name is Shams al-Din Abu Jafar Mohammed bin Zayn al-Din Abai, al-Hassan Ali bin Husam al-Din Ibrahim bin Hassan bin Ibrahim bin Abai Jamhar al-Shabani al-Bakri al hasse His father, Zayn al-Din Ali, and his grandfather, Husam al-Din were both scholars and belonged to the prominent Abai Jumhur family. This clan was a branch in al Asa of the Banu Shaban, itself a Sion of the Banu Bakr. The Abai Jumhur are considered ancestors of the al Athan family by scholar Jawad al Ramadan. In his time, Ibn Abai Jumhur was also known as al Hasawi. Biography Ibn Abai Jumhur was born in the village of Tamiya in what is now the al Asa Governorate during the reign of the first Jabrid Emir, probably around 1434 to 1435. He grew up during the region's golden age under the auspices of his jurist father. Teaching He studied in al Asa with his father and a number of scholars, including Mohammed bin Musa al Nusawi al Asa, his fiqh teacher, Ali bin Mohammed bin Mani, and others. He then went on to finish his studies in Najaf, where he studied with teachers including most notably Hassan bin Abdul Karim al Fatal al Najafi. Among the scholars who gave him permission to transmit hadiths were Hazar al Din al Awali al Barani, Mohammed ibn Ahmad al Musawi al Asi, and Abdullah bin Fathala al Qumi. After nearly twenty years in Najaf, he left on Hajj to the Hejaz in 1472 following the Shami pilgrimage route. During that time, he stayed in the town of Karakna in Jabal Amil, then under the rule of Mamluk Sultan Kate Bey, where he stayed for a month to study under Bahraini Sheikh Ali bin Hilal al-Jazari. Travels After finishing his Hajj, Ibn Abi Jumper returned to his native al Asa and stayed there a while until he traveled to Iraq and Khorasan in 1473, along the way writing the letters ZD LMS for in greater journeys and SWL Eldon Basics of Faith. When he reached Mashhad, he began training with Musin bin Mohammed. Debates with al Harawi. In 1473, during the reign of Timurid Emperor Hussein Baykar, a famous Sunni Shiite debate was held featuring Ibn Abi Jumhur as defender of the Shiite position and a Sunni scholar from the capital of Herat. The three-round debate was held in Tus, near Mashhad, where he Ibn Abi Jumhur was labeled the Arab speaker, given the lack of Persian shades to hold that side of the debate at the time. 
The first and last rounds were held in the house of Mohsen al Razoi, while the second was held at the Balasar School, a part of the Imam Riza holy shrine built on April 27, 1474, during the reign of Sultan Ahmed Mirza that has been used as city hall since 1989. The first debate centered on Ali's legitimacy as caliph, the second on the issue of children of adulterers, and the third on deception and defamation with regards to the succession. The debates were attended by a number of Shiite and Sunni scholars, the former holding Ibn Ani Jumher to be the victor. Some sources believe the other debater, labeled al fadhil al harawi was in fact the Shafi jurist Ahmed bin Yahya al-Taftizani, the chief ulama of Herat for thirty years who would be killed along with a number of other Sunni clerics by the founding Safavid Emperor Ismail, I in 1510. Pressed to record his arguments, Ibn Abi Jumher published a book of them most recently reissued in 2015 as LMJDLT Phi LMDHHB Debates in Doctrine. Several Persian translations exist, including ones by Noros Ali Ibn Bastami in his Afardi W.S. El Tirik, or Paradise of Dates, Jalaluddin Mohammed al Kashani, and Shah Mohammed al Hamdani written in Nastalik. Mohammed Ashraf bin Ali al Sharif al Hassani published a translation in 1679 during the reign of Suleiman of Persia, as did Ibn Zayn al Din al Alam al Asfahani in his book El Zhrt el Zwayat Fi el Rwd at el Bayat Zawiya in the Basilar school during Ramadan on July 14, 1687. 1478 to 1501. Ibn Abi Jumher continued living in Mashhad near the Imam Riza shrine as he studied, taught, and wrote for several years, then returned to Hilla, Iraq, where he wrote an exegesis of Shiite advocacy, tradition of Zainabia, entitled MNY at Alalbib Phi SHRH LTHD Hib Intellectual Endeavor, to explain refinement. In 1481, he returned to Al Asa. Finishing his book QBS LQTD Phi Shrite LFT WLSTFT, a model for implementing fatwas and referenda there. Afterward, he moved to Bahrain, then called Well, where he dictated his book LBWRQ LMH Snyat LTJLY LDR at LJMHRI at improved insights into the principles of FIC over four Majli seminars ending on March 2, 1483. After a brief return to Al Asa, he traveled to Meshhad once more, where he completed case at Chef at LHL and HWL LSTDLO, revealing the case for conditions of inference on December 2, 1483. He stayed there until early 1484, when he wrote the letter QLM Ijf L tilde Alem Kaelfin, Emin L Elum Bisel Eldin the least Muslims, should know about the fundamentals of religion. Among the towns he visited during his travels from 1485, to 1490 was Diria in Najd. In 1487, on a brief return to Tamiya, he completed his book, LNWR LMNJY MNLZLM, Phi HI at MSLK Elfam Phi LM LKLM, enlightening footnotes on Al Sayyid Hassan, Al Husseini Al Lawasani's Guide to Theology. That same year, he once again went on Hajj returning a third time through Iraq and arriving in Najaf in early 1488. After a brief return to Mashhad where he wrote a critique of KTBBHR Elms on the Sea of Genealogy, but it was on a prolonged stay in Najaf that he wrote several books, including LMSLK LJMY at Phi SHRH Elfi at LSHID at Collected Tracts on Explaining the Millennial Message and MJLY MRA at LMNJY the in 1489, he left for Mashhad once more, where he finished the books T by D Absolution and a commentary on the local monuments. Then he traveled to Gorgon, then called Astarabad, to authorize his student Mohammed bin Sayl al Garawi al Hili in the nearby village of Kalkin, along with another named Jalaluddin Baram. Ibn Abi Jumher stayed in Astarabad for two or three years and seemed to have divided his time between there and Mashhad until 1497. That year, he traveled to Medina to complete his work in LFKR Phi SHR HLBBLHDY SHR some thoughts on explaining the 11th surah. 
Afterwards, he returned to Iraq and lived in Hilla, where he authorized Ali bin Qasim bin Afaka al-Hili, on January 28, 1501, the last date clearly mentioned in the sources as connected to Ibn Abi Jumhur. The death Sources differ as to the time of his death, but according to scholar Hashim Mohammed al shaks he likely died around 1505 in his native al asa possibly at the age of 72. Some Persian sources differ and claim that he died in Mashhad and was buried in the Imam Reza shrine. Work Ibn Abi Jumher was considered a leading Shiite Muslim scholar of his time and was well versed in fiqh, philosophy, logic, rhetoric, and hadith interpretation. According to Kamil Mustafa Shabai, Ibn Abi Jumher al Asay was the next iteration of the thought of Matham al Barani and Haider Amulai, and a model for that of Sheikh Ahmed. He was a writer and poet as well as a judge, and a few verses remain in his book. MJMW at LMWZ, WLNCWLHK, a collection of sermons, advice, and judgments. He interpreted many sunny hadiths that conformed to Shi'i tradition. Philosophy Ibn Abi Jumher is perhaps best remembered for promulgating a key doctrine of Shi'i scholarship, the maxim that synthesis, however possible, is more appropriate than removal from canon. This theory holds that wherever multiple narratives on the word of the Twelve Imams conflict, but are clearly transmitted and can be reconciled, they should be combined rather than favoring one tradition over another so as not to give undue weight to fame, friends' work, contravention, or personal preference. If this process is not followed, and a scholar chooses a favorite interpretation, important truths may be overlooked or indecision may block them from acting on it. As he put it in his book, W.L.Y. La Wali Awali Al Alali, for every two events that appear to be contradictory, you must first search for their meaning and the qualities of the connotations of their terms. Then he adds a point from the Hadith of the Macula of Umar ibn Hanzala from a disciple of Jafar al Sadiq. If you are not able to do that reconciliation, or if neither stands out to you, then return to the Hadith so you work with the renowned if opposed by the obscure. If the figures are equal in renown, work from them both as narrators and follow your own judgment. If they are equal in that, then see what common doctrine would hold and put that first. Theology Teaching Ibn Abi Jumher was a very influential teacher and authorized several students to narrate hadith, including Jamal al-Din Hassan bin Ibrahim ibn Abi Shabana al-Barani and Musin bin Mohammed al-Razawi al-Qumi, the latter his closest student, and an associate from his last years at Imam Reza shrine. Other notable disciples include Sharaf al-Din Mahmud bin Allah al-Din al-Talqani, who studied fiqh hadith. Among other graduates were Rabbi bin Juma al-Ghazi al-Huwazi, Jalal al-Din Baram al-Astarabadi, Atta al bin Ma'in al-Din al-Sarwa al-Astarabadi, Ali bin Qasim known as Ibn Azaka al-Hili, Hassin al-Tuni, and Abdul Wahab Ibn Ali al-Husseini al-Astabadi. Criticism Ibn Abi Jumher was criticized for his Shiite sympathies and accused of exaggeration by such scholars as Yedekileli Sayyid Abdullah Effendi in his Rai D.L. Elam scholars of Riyadh. Other scholars defended him, including Nematala Jazeri, Mirza Hussein Nori Tabarsi, and Shabad Din Marashi Najafi. His textual magnanimity in W.L.Y. La Wiley was also said by some sources to mix the wheat with the chaff. Al Marashi wrote a letter on September 19, 1982 which he included in a foreword to his edition of W.L.Y. Law Wiley. Legacy A mosque in Tainia is attributed to Ibn Abi Jumher's time and includes an engraving in the Mihrab dated to 1407, when his father Ali and grandfather Ibrahim would have prayed there. The text on the engraving is preserved and was inlaid up top, stating the Shahada of the Credo that there is no God but Allah and Mohammed is his prophet. In 2013, the Ibn Abi Jumar Heritage Society was founded in Com. Publications.